Good morning. So glad everyone's here this morning. We're going to get started. And we're going to do that with a word of prayer. Please bow with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this Sunday, this day that you've commanded us to come learn about you, to worship you, to praise your name. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for all the people that are here. We thank you that, that so many people love you and want to serve you. Father, we pray that you would be with us this morning and help us to be able to clear our minds, be able to focus so that we can learn, so that we can give you the praise that you deserve. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we are going to continue our lesson in Acts. This is our second week. We are going to be on chapter 3 and 4. If y'all want to go ahead and turn to Acts 3 and 4, that's where the majority of our reading is going to be. We we'll also have some references from other places, and I will need some readers, so please be ready for that. Throughout the Bible, there is a common theme that stretches throughout the Old Testament, the New Testament, through the patriarchal age, through the, the uh, giving of the law, through uh, the Christian uh, age that we're in now, there's a common theme that goes throughout the entire Bible. And if you believe that there is a God, if you believe that there is a creator, a sustainer of life that, that has given us his word, and we have that word in the Bible, uh, then you'll know that this theme is not a suggestion or a good idea. That this, this theme throughout the Bible is a command. And that is... That theme is to help others. From the very beginning, it was, it was taught uh, to help others, to, to be kind to one another. And we're going to look at just a few verses uh, that talk about that. Um, if I could get a few people to read James 2.8. James 2.8. Someone else to get Proverbs 19.17. And then one other person to please get Luke 6, 38. Whoever has uh, James, please go ahead. Thank you. Proverbs nineteen seventeen. Luke 16, 38. I'm sorry, Luke 6, not 16. Luke 6, 38. I have it right here. Given will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with every measure you use, it will be measured back to you. There's tons of verses. These are just a few that talk about how we're to help others. Here in uh, Luke 3, where we're about to begin, Peter and John are, are going to do just that. They're going to help someone. All right, so uh, let me begin. Uh, we're going to read the first uh, ten verses. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. Who, seeing, Paul, P seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth rise up and walk. And he took him by the right, by the right hand and lifted him up, 
And immediately his feet, his feet and ankle bones received strength, so that he leaped up, up, stood, and walked, and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging, begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at, the, at what had happened to him. Here, Peter and John saw someone in need, and they wanted to help. If, when we were coming to church this morning, if we pulled up and there's somebody sitting at the door of the church, what would your reaction be? Would you go to the deacon in charge of benevolence and say, hey, there's somebody out here that needs help? Would you go to the security guard, the, secu- the deacon over security, and say, hey, go check this guy out. He looks kind of sketchy. Would you go to them and ask them if they need help? Peter and John could have done any of those. They, they, went, to see, to, they went to help him. So in verse 11, we have uh, the response, the response of the man that was healed. Now as a lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people together ran to them uh, in the porch, uh, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So here, he was so moved with compassion, he was so thankful, he did not even want to leave Peter's side. He, he was clinging to him. How did the people respond when they saw that the man could walk? That's told to us in verse 12. So when Peter saw it, he res- that, that was also told to us in, uh, in verse 11, I'm sorry. And uh, the, the people were greatly amazed. And Peter's response to that Uh, to that amazement was in 12. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at us or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? He immediately gives the glory to God and he explains to them, hey, I'm no different than y'all. I'm just a guy I'm just a guy that is doing God's work. And through God, this man, through Jesus, this man has been healed. So, I want to look at chapter 3 in the form of action and reaction. So, with every action, there's an equal reaction. There's, we can look at this beginning of chapter 3 in the same way. Uh, the action was Peter and John showing love to someone. And that's, uh, that was what we read first in uh, the first ten verses. Uh, 11 and 12 is the primary reaction. They had the attention of the man healed. That was the, in, the, intended, the intended reaction by showing the love of, that Peter had for this man that he did not know. He now has the attention, and from, from that attention, he uses it to uh, give glory to God and to turn people's attention to God. Does anyone notice someone, does anyone notice an individual when they are doing the same thing as everyone else? You have a group of people all walking. You really don't pick out any specific person. But if you have someone walking against everyone else, it's easier to pick them out. They're doing something different. There might have been people that gave this man some money when they walked in. There might have been some people that smiled at him. uh, But none of them helped him. 
Here Peter wanted to do more. Well, he said that he didn't have silver and gold, that he had the power of God. The, the greater the expression of love, the greater the attention, the loved individual you'll have. That's, that's pretty basic, but when we show someone that love, especially someone that does not normally get that kind of love, the greater the attention you're going to have of them. Absolutely. They had the opportunity to help out multiple times and still didn't. Uh, I imagine that he was receiving some help because most people don't do the same thing over and over again expecting to receive some different uh, outcome. So I'm sure some people were probably giving him money. That's why he was there every day. Yes, sir? The, the other side of that would have been to take them in, take that man into their house, which was, my understanding is it wasn't that uncommon to have someone, a visitor from out of town to stay with. There's other, other instances in the Bible where a visitor would come from out of town and they would invite them into their house and they would be their guest and they would help them out. That, that's my line of thinking there. That could have been the case. That's rarely ever done anymore. Uh, but that would have been the, uh, I guess, the equivalent, because, like you said, other people could not have healed him. Um, through this action and reaction, there's a secondary uh, and a third reaction. Uh, who knows who saw the second reaction? The second reaction was the reaction of the people. So the first was the man and his, uh, his appreciation uh, for being healed. The second was the people. They, they 
So the people, this is at the temple. So the people that are there, they would have had a, a knowledge of God. They're there to worship God. They would have known the history of the Jewish people, the miracles that have been done. They would have uh, been very familiar with these things are possible. These things have been done in the past. God can do these things. And here they see it firsthand. And so now the, uh, the Jewish people there would give their attention to uh, Paul. And then the third reaction, of course, uh, is the Jewish leaders. And that begins in, uh, begins in chapter 4. So chapter 4, 1 through 7. Could somebody please uh, read Acts 4, 1 through 7 for me? Thank you. Uh, so we had the uh, secondary reaction of the people uh, being amazed, and then the third reaction of the Jewish leaders, uh, and they, they were upset because the reaction, well, we're going to get that, to that in a minute, but let's look first at the reaction of, uh, or the, uh, uh, the response uh, of the people in verse 4 there however many of those who had heard the word believed and the number of the men came to be about 5,000 so they were amazed and and they because of their amazement because of their knowledge of the, the past and because they've now seen this miracle they believe the words that Peter and John are saying uh, and then and then the response of the Jewish leaders uh, in 1, 2, and 3. Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. Here, the Jewish leaders, they want the attention of the people. They think we're in charge, the people are supposed to listen to us, and who are these guys? They recognize that they, they were not educated in their schooling. They recognize that they were just common people, and how are these guys doing this kind of stuff? The people should be listening to us. They were jealous. They were jealous. And so being in a position of authority and having power they went and put them in prison uh, until they could uh, have time to, to think about and to figure out what to do with them. So when you're trying to deal with a, uh, a misunderstanding, uh, a disagreement, or an argument, it is a good idea to try to understand the motivation of the different parties. And that's what I'm going to try to do here as we go through this. Uh, when, when you are having a, a family disagreement. Uh, has anybody ever read the, uh, the book Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus? Maybe? Nobody? All right, so uh, you, we think differently. You don't have to read a book to know that we think differently. And so it, often uh, you can have one idea in your head, 
and your spouse can have another idea in your head. And because those ideas come from different places, uh, it'll get mixed up and it can cause an argument. Uh, so when trying to, uh, to untangle that argument, it's, it's wise, it's smart to try to think, uh, how are, what are they coming from? What, what are they thinking about this? It, it, it helps to ask questions, but uh, it, at least try to, uh, to think about it from their perspective. So here we're going to think about it from the different perspectives that, uh, that we have here. Peter and John. Well, they are trying to only preach Jesus, to teach Jesus and to uh, tell the people that he is the Messiah. That's the easy part. Uh, next... <coughs> Next is the people. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the, the healed man. I skipped right over that. The healed man, uh, he was only trying to get food. He was trying to live day to day. He's trying to just make ends meet. He's uh, just not thinking there's anything else besides my next meal. He's not, he's not planning for retirement or vacation or anything down the road. He's only thinking about this day. So that's his motivation. Uh, the, the people... People that are there, they're trying to be good Jews. They're at the temple. They're trying to do what, uh, what they've been taught their whole life. They are trying to, uh, to uh, obey God and his law. Uh, they're trying to be good Jews. Uh, they would have a basic understanding of the law, the Jewish history. They would know that the Messiah is coming, and, uh, and they would be uh, that, that he would do miracles like this. Uh, and then the Jewish leaders. Uh, the Jewish leaders, they want the attention of the people. Uh, their first reaction uh, was to, to stop uh, these people from teaching because if they had not been taught by the Jewish leaders, they're obviously wrong because, again, they're the ones in charge. They're the ones that are supposed to teach. And so anyone else that's teaching, oh, you haven't been taught formally. Uh, so you're, you, you, don't, you don't know because we haven't told you. And uh, so their, their first reaction is to stop the, the teaching. All right. So what did Peter say when the Jewish uh, religious leaders asked by what power... He and John had healed the man born lame. That was in 8 through 12. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for doing, good deed, for, for doing a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you and all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised up from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. Uh, this is the stone which uh, was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, when the Jewish leaders, uh, when they asked him by what power, they, they emphatically said, Jesus, Jesus. And I could just see, I, they, they do it far better than what I would, but I could just imagine, you know, just a couple of Joe Blows up there, uh, Jesus, that's it, Jesus is it, uh, of course they had the Holy Spirit and, uh, and did not fumble around like I do. And, uh, and what did he say, uh, what did he say about Christ in, uh, in the end of that, that Jesus was the, the Christ and through him was salvation. So the Jews would have been expecting, uh, 
the Messiah, the Christ, um, it would have been something that they would have been taught, preached, teach. It's he's coming. It's going to happen. But here they are saying, "Well, it already came, and you missed it." Uh, yeah, Jesus is here. You crucified him because you were arrogant and didn't want to pay attention. So why did the Jewish leaders marvel at the words and the boldness of Peter and John? Remind them of Jesus? Jesus? I would imagine that most people, when, when they got around those Jewish leaders, were shy, humble maybe. Uh, oh, these are the teachers of Israel. These are the people that are, uh, they, they don't sin. And thinking that they are somehow better than everyone else. Peter and John, they... They come in and they're unapologetically preaching Jesus. They are bold in it. They are, they are the they are Jesus cheerleaders. And they th- this is this is this is unlike anything that they that the Jewish leaders have seen. Not it's not what they're used to. And so they really don't know how to handle it because here they are just saying, Jesus! Yes, ma'am? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, he's, they're really giving uh, the Jewish leaders a gut check, uh, in a sense, because, I mean, they're doing this in front of, like you said, other people. And so they're like, oh, wait, I mean, and they can't deny that the miracle happened, because everybody knows this is the guy that sat there at the gate asking for alms, and yep, that's him, skipping and hopping, there he goes. I mean, it's, it, it's impossible to deny Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What what do you think the what do you think that the Jewish leaders were most concerned about in in Peter and John's teaching? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. That the, the, they would now see that these guys are doing the work of God because they have the power that God has to prove that they are from God. 
Jewish leaders don't have that. So, yeah, they're absolutely worried about losing their, their power and influence. <clears throat> Why did the Jewish leaders not even consider, not even consider, Peter and John were saying the truth? They, it, it, it wasn't even, they didn't even consider it. It's just automatically, hey, we're going to lose our influence. Not, is this right? They, they, they bypass that altogether. They can't be right because we didn't teach them. And so they must be wrong. And, uh, and we have to stop them. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. That was the same same thing that the apostles thought. Jason? An arrogant person is an unteachable person. There's a lesson in there for us. Are we teachable? If somebody, if a Jehovah's Witness comes to your house, say, hey, would you like to have a Bible study? Do we we hide in the other room until they go away? Uh, I say that smirkingly because I've done that. Uh, do, uh, Do you say, hey, be quiet, be quiet, kids. Uh, I've done that. Uh, that that's, that's not right. This is, these are opportunities. And we have to condition ourselves ahead of time that when these things do happen, we are ready. Maybe prepare some, some information uh, to talk to them about when they do come. Uh, not just Jehovah's Witness, anybody that wants to have a Bible study. So it's not always us asking other people, would you like to have a Bible study? Sometimes it's them asking us, and we have to be ready for that. Uh, we can't be the ones that says, no, nope, you're wrong, I'm right. What if we were wrong? I was raised Baptist. I grew up Baptist. The first several times that someone told me that you're not once saved, always saved, I said, no, nah, you're not right. You don't know what you're talking about. My preacher says so else. Uh, you have to be baptized? No, that's a work. That, that, that's not a requirement to be saved. Because that's a work. Because my preacher told me. And we cannot, cannot have that mindset. Because we are human and we are fallible. Go to the Bible. What does the Bible say? I got to tell you guys, I'm a deacon in the Lord's church, and if somebody showed me in the Bible that the Catholics had it right, see you guys. We have to be teachable. Know what the Bible says. Check out what they're telling you in the Bible. 
but you have to be teachable. Yes, sir. Parents, have any of y'all ever had to apologize to your kid? I have. Uh, that's, that's important to teach them, I'm human, I can make mistakes. When you get older, you can make mistakes too, and you need to be able to apologize. Um. How did Peter and John reply to the council's command not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus? This is verses 19 and 20. Let me read that for us real quick. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Rather, it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God you judge. For we cannot, for we cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and heard. That's, that's really putting it back on them. What, what do the Jewish leaders teach? Do what God says. And here they're saying, we're doing what God has told us. I mean, that's, that's really turning their words right back around on them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I would I would imagine that we have some people that are sports fans that could rattle off all kinds of statistics. Uh, I'm sure you have hobbies, you have uh, likes and dislikes that that things that you could rattle off in in considerable detail about all different subjects. I remember using the excuse, well, I just don't have a memory to memorize scripture. I have a terrible memory. I can't tell you, I, I guarantee that 20 of y'all, I've said, hey, what's your name again? <laughs> uh, terrible memory. That doesn't mean that I can't study the word and, and figure out what God has to say. And so I make notes. I make lots of notes. Uh, so that when those times do come, uh, and I have to remember where that verse is, I can go to my notes and I can figure it out. Uh, th there's, there's not an excuse, is the point. There's, there's, there's not an excuse. Yes, ma'am. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, so what did, so after this, uh, maybe we need to read that first, so we'll have that in our, in our mind. Let's, uh, let's go to, uh, we're in Acts, still in chapter 4, 23 through 37. And being let go, they went to their own companions and, and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all who, that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant David said, why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For, true, for truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now look on their threats and grant to your servants with your servant that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and, to, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and soul, neither did anyone say that anything he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common, and with great power and the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all, nor was there anyone among them who lacked, for all who were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and they distributed each to as, as anyone had need. And, uh, and, jo and Jose, Jose, who was also named Barnabas, the apostle, which is translated son of encouragement, the Levite of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought it the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. All right. For what did the believers after they learned Peter and John had been threatened and told not to preach, what did they pray for? They prayed for boldness. When something bad happens to someone that we know, that we love, to us. I usually, most of the time, pray that that bad thing will be taken away. If someone's sick, please help them to get better. If uh, they lose their job, please help them to get a job. I always pray for the bad thing to go away. Here, it's not what they prayed for. They prayed for boldness, not for the persecution to go away, not for... Uh, it to be easier for them, but that they would have boldness. Uh, can I get somebody to read 1 John 3.13? 1 John 3.13. Yeah, it was. It just maybe it was thirteen or fourteen. Okay. We know that he has passed from death to life because we love the brothers. He who does not love his no. brother abides in death. Maybe it wasn't right. Anyways, 
it's the one that said, uh, the, the verse that I was trying to get to was where God says, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Uh, there's actually many verses that talk about uh, that there is going to be persecution. There's going to be tribulation. There's going to be a hard time for those that are Christians. That's not a very good, it's not a very good uh, bumper sticker. It's not a, it's not a great uh, advertisement. Hey, be a Christian. Bad things are going to happen to you. Uh, the, the apostles, these Christians here, they knew that these things were going to happen. They saw what happened to Jesus. And he told them, hey, they did this to me. They're going to do it to you. It's going to happen. And here, they didn't pray for those bad things to be taken away, for them not to happen or, or to ha- you know, bypass them or, or any of that. They, they asked for boldness. There's, a, there's a, probably a lot that could be said. Oh, we're about out of time. Uh, there's a lot of lessons that can be learned in that. When, when, when we have these trials come before us, when, when we have hard times, that our goal should not be to get through them. Our goal should be to show that we are Christians, show the love of Christ in us as we're growing through them. Because as we're being put to the fire, that's when we shine. Yes, sir? Absolutely. Hey, thank y'all for your attention. We'll uh, continue next week.